Welcome to The Rock Pod, presented by the Royal Oak, Michigan Chamber of Commerce. I am John Gay from Jagged Detroit Podcasts. And I'm Trish Crew, the third generation jeweler and owner of Your Personal Jeweler. I'm Lisa Biddy, your neighborhood realtor with Keller Williams Advantage. Excited for today's guests. They are Emily Burnett and Anton Britting of JPI Inspections. Welcome both to the show. Hello. Thanks for having us. So let's start with the basics. What is a home inspection and why would I need one? People typically get a home inspection when they are about to buy a house. They've looked at the house, they've talked to their realtor, they've put it in an offer, it's been accepted, and they just want to um, get it checked out and make sure that everything is up to par and that there's not going to be any big headaches once they move in, things that they don't know about. So when we're doing a home inspection, we're looking at everything about the house, the structure, um, the appliances, all of the systems, the heating, the cooling, the electrical, the plumbing. Um, we're looking at the roof to make sure that there's no leaks. We're looking at the ages of stones and just kind of educating our client on, you know, what's going on with their particular house, what things they need to maybe think about budgeting to fix right away, what things they can um, budget to kind of upgrade in the near future, um, safety issues, things like that. If you're about to buy a home, you're about to make the biggest investment of your life, potentially. You think you see a home that you are interested in. Once your offer is accepted, then you have a period of time in which to have the home inspected before you sign your life away. (laughs) And so part of that purchase agreement lets us, the inspectors, come in and assess like Emily said, the integrity of the structure of the building, how the systems are operating, and any anticipated maintenance that may be harmful to you or the occupants. I know our resident uh, realtor has had a lot of questions for you, Lisa, so take it away. It is shocking. Most buyers spend about 10 to 20 minutes in a home and then they're writing an offer on it. So you guys as the inspector are a crucial part of that decision-making process because it allows them to get back in and really kind of look under the hood, so to speak, of that home. You know, you mentioned a lot of the aspects that you guys inspect during the general home inspection. There's quite a few other tests that a buyer has the option of choosing to do, such as radon, sewer scopes, mold, water testing, well and septic, and even the chimney. Now, do you guys do all of those inspections as well? Yes, we do provide many ancillary services. One of our ancillary services that we offer is an inspection of the drain lines. The drain lines are invisible to us as home buyers. So getting a drain line inspection can behoove the buyer. We can identify problems or issues with the drain lines, such as bellies, valleys, tree root intrusions or offsets in the line that could all potentially cause wastewater issues in the home. As you see, a lot of buyers don't realize when you're purchasing a home that's on city water, you're actually liable for the pipe that goes from your house until it connects to the city sewer line. And doing a sewer scope is vital because sometimes that city sewer line is on the opposite side of the street. If you do run into any issues, you could potentially have to fix those and potentially even shut down a street in order to do so, which could be very costly. Yeah, typically when we're doing inspections in Oakland County or like, you know, in this area, we live in Ferndale. So when we do inspections close to home, we always recommend getting a sewer scope, um, especially for seeing large trees, things like that. And also with our inspections, if people end up getting a sewer scope with us, um, so we have short-term warranties that come with all of our inspections, but if they get um, the sewer scope, the sewer line warranty is actually extended. So it goes from 90 days to six months. So that would cover like any big major um, breakages or collapse in, in the line within that first six months of moving in. Or as far as the other services, Um, We do offer radon testing. We do water quality testing. We don't do septic inspections and we don't do 
the chimney inspection, we typically refer out for those services just because it can be kind of difficult and time consuming to find the septic. And with the chimney, we just don't have those specialized tools. So we, we do refer out to those, but all of the other ones you mentioned, we do offer. Emily, so you mentioned that you're in Ferndale. Yes. How far outside of Ferndale do you cover? We go very far. Um, our business was started in Tecumseh. That's where my parents live. So that's in Lenawee County. It's kind of far west, about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, but we go as far west as like Jackson. We do a lot of inspections down south in like the Monroe area. And then we also can go like as far north as like Flint. You know, we had talked offline before we started recording about some of the really state-of-the-art equipment that you use. You guys get into that a little bit, too? Sure. Before we talk about our equipment, I just kind of want to zoom back out a thousand percent and talk about why you need a house and why you would want a home inspection. Sure. So it can be very, very competitive out there in the housing market. We've heard some buyers' remorse stories in the past few years of people waiving their inspection just to get their offer accepted. Now, this is not something we would encourage home buyers to do, especially (laughs) first time home buyers. When you are buying a home, you're buying something that's used. A lot of times you're buying something that's been used for a hundred years or more. So we feel that it's very, very important to have a professional come in and tell you what sort of things are inevitably going to go wrong? What sort of maintenance is expected in the future? So we can also help prepare buyers and sellers for what sort of stipulations their loan might require. For instance, if you're a first time home buyer going for an FHA loan, there are some requirements that FHA appraisers will look for. So part of our job is to help identify things in the home that could be called out by the appraiser after the inspection is finished. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Now let's talk about those tools. Yeah, please. (laughs) So uh, one of the things I have next to me is an infrared camera. This is one of my favorite devices to use on the inspection. Emily's laughing at you right now. <laughs> Too bad it's an audio podcast because because I I can hear you banging around all the stuff you're you've got out there in the room with you. Emily is teasing me because I'm showing off my favorite camera that I use every day, like it's a Fabergé egg or something. Yeah, and just to me. <laughs> well, anyway, this infrared camera. If you aim this at a window or a wall, you can tell how energy efficient the window is or if insulation is present between the wall studs. Oh, wow, okay. If I aim this infrared camera at an electrical panel, I can tell if there are hot terminals, which indicates arcing. If I turn the infrared camera at a heat register, I can see if the furnace is pumping hot air through that heat register. Similarly, I can tell if there's compromise using the ductwork with this infrared camera. So it's something I carry with me on every inspection yeah it's pretty cool it, lo- it makes you have like um like you can see like the predator <laughs> <laughs> it's like That's superpowers it. yeah <laughs> yeah those are super fun you can even like take your hand and touch the wall and pull your hand off and you still have a an imprint left <laughs> yeah, yeah they're great we like to, when we're doing inspection, we like to be able to like walk on our roof. We like to get our eyes like directly on the roof. Um, but sometimes it's just not possible. Um, our ladders only go so high. And sometimes the roof is a couple stories up or maybe it's just like way too steep for us to get up there. Or made of slate. Yeah. Some um, roof materials just aren't walkable. So we have a drone camera that we fly up and we take like a ton of photos so that we can get a close-up look of the roof and see the things that, you know, we can't really see. I just want to add that she's really good at flying the drone. (laughs) Whip around chimney like it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, I got pretty good. You know, and it's a cool, fun toy, but it also, it really does help us see, um, see things that, you know, in the past, 
like we have standards of practice. So if, if a roof isn't walkable, we aren't required to walk on it. But we like to do everything we can to still give people a picture of that roof. Um, and in the past, inspectors didn't really have that technology and they just kind of have to set it as a limitation in an inspection, like, you know, this roof just wasn't walkable. But now, because we have all this technology, we're able to get that camera up there and say, you know, the flashing is old or, you know, you do have some shingles missing. And it's pretty fun. I think that as technology gets better and the photos will get better. Why don't you talk about the radon mitigation device or the radon testing device? We have radon machines. They use cellular data. Hmm. I know when my dad first started the company, when he had a radon test, he wouldn't be able to get the results until he went and picked up that radon test and read the machine. Um, But with our radon machine, um, because they use cellular data, they are sending like a constant report to an app on our phone that's telling us what the levels of the radon are at. And then when the test is done, we get a full report in 48 hours, whether we pick it up or not. I think it's really been helpful for us and for like realtors, because sometimes you just like can't get back in time to get that. But our realtors know that whether or not we're able to pick it up that day, or if we have to wait till the next day, they're going to get results in 48 hours for their radon tests. And, you know, right now they only have so much turnaround time for inspections and all that stuff to get done. So it's pretty cool that we're able to kind of get it out there when they need it. Nice. I know we were speaking earlier about um, the importance of getting a inspection and all the potential problems that can arise. Have you ever saved a home buyer from a really big disaster? <laughs> about once a week. <laughs> uh, so here's a little anecdote I like to share sometimes. Um, <laughs> There was a young couple buying their first home in Romulus 16 months ago. Emily and I were hired to go inspect the home for them. When we showed up, the home looked cute. You know, from the outside, it didn't look like there were any major issues at all. It had just been split, so the inside, for the most part, was all new. Yeah, new floors, uh, new cabinets. Uh, I think they put in some new appliances as mm-hmm. well. Yeah. You know, for a flipped home, it looked like it was in pretty good condition. Yeah. Until we got into the bedroom and saw mushrooms growing up through the floorboards. The brand. Oh, no. The brand with new floorboards. I didn't even think mushrooms could grow that fast. (laughs) Naturally, I think, all right, what's going on here? (laughs) So fast forward 30 minutes, I'm army crawling through the crawl space under the house, (laughs) which is something I do on every home. There was, without exaggerating, one inch thick mold growth on the subfloor. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It looks like someone had sprayed shaving cream all over the floor <laughs> joists and subfloor of this home. Oh, oh. Right, right. I saw a dead spider encapsulated in mold. I saw <laughs> a dead mouse with mushrooms growing oh. up there. <laughs> Anyway, that, that's enough. Yeah, it is. We delivered the results of this home inspection in a detailed report like we always do. And the home buyer decided that if this mold was mitigated, then they would go through with the home purchase. So the home seller had a company come out, mitigate the mold, and we were hired to do a reinspection to verify that the mold had been mitigated professionally. And this is where the disaster aversion part comes in. Mm-hmm. So we show up to the reinspection, and not only had the mold not been professionally mitigated, the home seller fabricated receipts and work orders. <gasps> yes. And instead of you saying, a mold mitigation chemical, he sprayed the entire crawl space with bleach. (sighs) Now, bleach does not kill mold, and bleach actually locks moisture into wood, further propagating the mold. Uh, When I returned, I was able to provide the client with realistic expectations. 
the realtor, she was a really good realtor and she kind of suspected that they hadn't actually gotten it done. They had like invoices, but no like receipts or anything. So she, it, it gave her like the power to be like, you need to actually get this done by a professional. So a professional company did finally come in and they did finally get um, the proof of that because the, you know, the sellers were, were kind of like just lying and hiding about it. They were trying to conceal issues from us to uh, sell the home. And to, I just like to give a tip of that hat to that realtor. You know who you are. Yeah. Another time we um, did a house for another young couple. They were a really beautiful old house. They were in love with it. They wanted like an older house. And it was raining that day, which we really like to do inspections on rainy days because it shows us more than dry days. Yeah. Yeah. We're going through this really nice house and everything's looking good. And I walk into the living room and they had like an addition, like a little sunroom built on. And between that addition, the sunroom and the living room, it was just like an open doorway and it was pouring water like a waterfall. Oh, imagine going to see a home that you thought was perfect. And on the day of inspection, you see an indoor waterfall. That, yeah, that's not supposed to be there. That family was there. They're like all freaking out. So they're like, okay, we called the sellers. Um, they come home and act like it is the first time it's ever happened, but they pull these plastic totes out like immediately just for it. <laughs> and we go up to the balcony and because there was a balcony right above this area with like gorilla tape right there. And the closer we're looking, like as we're looking inside, it, it had finally stopped raining. And, you know, even the couple was kind of like really um, scared off by that. But, you know, we finish our inspection either way and give them all the information. So as it stopped raining, we took a closer look at the wood, like in the doorway. And it was obviously a persistent problem. The wood that we could see was like rotting. Um, and it was just something that like, you know, the seller had tried to hide and probably hoped that it wouldn't happen on that day. And so they were just really lucky, you know, we're never like, don't buy this house. Sometimes people ask us, should I buy this house? And it's not really our place to say that. That's not our decision to make. Yeah. And every problem is fixable. It's just a matter of what cost and who's paying for it. <laughs> yeah. And furthermore, everyone has different wants different needs, different resources. Yeah. Some people are handy and want to take on maintenance projects. Some people want a home that's moving ready and maintenance free. Yeah. You know, we don't tell people don't buy this house and we didn't that day, but they were kind of like, thank goodness that we found this today because the sellers, they really were like trying to hide it and acting like it was the first time it had ever happened. Let me pull out these totes and buckets that I had can be stored <laughs> right here. <laughs> so, Emily, I know that you will be taking over ownership soon and JPI will be becoming woman owned. How do you feel? Are you excited? Yes. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, of course, I'm nervous. It's a uh, big responsibility. I'm and excited. I, <laughs> I have big shoes to fill. Um, you know, it's my family's company, so I want, it, I want us to do well and uh, my family is really supportive and anything that we need coming up, I'm sure that they'll help us. But yeah, I'm excited and I'm excited to be doing it with Anton. She's going to do great. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you have a lot of experience in this field. So congratulations and we look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you. What do you guys do when you're not working? Well, Emily does improv comedy at Planet Ants every Monday night if you'd like to come see it. <laughs> Nice. I do. I'm a part of um, the Planet Ant Farm team. So every Monday night at 730, we do a long form improv show. So I got into improv at a Chamber of Commerce meeting, not the Royal Oak one, but at when Ferndale was still around. Mm -hmm. And I won a free class at Go Comedy and then I just like loved it. And I've been doing it for a couple of years. So come out and see me at Planet Ant and Hamtramck. But um, Anton does professional hacky sack, also known as foot bag. <laughs> and he was in an international competition this year. 
It's true. See, this is why we do the podcast. We ask these hard-hitting questions and find out all about our guests. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of a closet hobby, but I've been to eight world championships, uh, zero titles. <laughs> if you want to see my freestyle moves, you can just go to YouTube and type in Anton Footbag, and you'll see some of my cool tricks. <laughs> Awesome. All right, before we wrap up, it is time for our fishbowl question of the day where we ask you a totally random question. So, Trish, would you pull today's fishbowl question of the day? My pleasure. Let me get a good one. Oh, boy. (laughs) What is on your bucket list for 2023? Well, uh, we are engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. We've done zero planning in uh, one year of engagement. So, uh, <laughs> we'll put that at the top of the to-do list. How about you, Adam? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Get married or just plan something at least. Be happy forever. Yeah. So so date, venue, none of it at this point? None of it. We're close to the courthouse every day. <laughs> There's appeal in that for sure. When you're self-employed, <laughs> that might not be a bad idea and throw a party later. <laughs> Right. Yeah. We want to thank you for coming on the podcast today, uh, giving us your insight and also telling us uh, some some really interesting stories as to why it's important to get a home inspection. If our listeners are buying a home and they want to get in contact with you for a home inspection, how do they best find you? Thanks, John. Uh, we do have an Instagram page called Journey Inspection. We also have a phone number where you can call and book us. It's 248 914 and then our website is journeypropertyinspections.com. Yeah, we'd be happy to perform that inspection for you. Thank you guys so much for being on our show. I can hands down agree with the importance of getting an inspection, and you guys were great to have on. My name is Elisa Bibby, and I'm a realtor with Keller Williams Advantage. I put the real back in realtor. The market is shifting, yet there are still niche markets and low inventory. Looking to get top dollar for your house? Give me a call or you can find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Sold by Lisa B. I'm Trish Carruth, third generation jeweler and owner of Your Personal Jeweler. I specialize in creating custom engagement, wedding rings, and fine jewelry. You can check out our new showroom on 4th and Washington. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Personal Jeweler or our website, www.thepersonaljeweler.com. And I am John Gay from Jagged Detroit Podcast. I am the podcast guy. If you like the way our show here sounds, you want me to create a podcast for you and your business to market yourself and stand up from your competition in 2023, you can find me online at jagandetroit.com. All of our contact info will be in our show notes. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of The Rock Pod presented for the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce. For more information about chamber events or how to get involved, you can visit royaloakchamber.com. Thanks, everyone. 